Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Mulier Guide. I'm a physical therapist and yoga instructor, and I'm here with a sample of the active level uh, yoga sequence. This is a much shorter version, but it will give you a good sense of whether or not the Hatha yoga is right for you. So I hope you uh, know that this entire practice is safe if you have low bone density or osteoporosis, and that um, you know if you feel you need to use a chair, please do so. Um, work at your pace. I look forward to having you join me on the mat. Let's get started with our bare feet standing on your yoga mat. You want to find a spot that uh, feels peaceful for you, where you know that you'll be distracted for the next 20 minutes from um, other things in life that are calling out to you all the time. So now is your opportunity to just focus in on your breath, on your body, on your alignment. So let's start by grounding our feet, feeling the base of your feet is always easier when you close your eyes. So softening your eyes if you're not comfortable with closing them all the way so that you can feel through the base of your big toe, fifth toe and the center of your heels. Feel how when you bring your weight through those triangular bases of your feet that you feel very balanced and centered. For some of you that lock your knees, you might feel that more weight is being distributed in the back. So just allow a little softening of the knees. And as you do so, press your feet firmly into the earth. As you press your feet down into the earth, you want to invite an opposite force up through your legs, up through your pelvic floor, I want you to feel the lifting of your lower ribs away from your pelvis. Allow your breath to be easy and relaxed. Feel a lifting of your ribs one away from the other. Feel lifting as though someone's just placed helium balloons under your armpits and it's lifting you to the sky the crown of your head being drawn up so you're just a little bit taller than when you started. We'll take a breath in, bringing shoulders up towards your earlobes and a breath out as we wrap the shoulder blades back and around. Lovely. Inhale, arms reach to the sky. And exhale, arms settle back down, but palms stay open. Lovely, feeling the openness feeling the gentle squeezing of the shoulder blades towards one another. And now invite your hands to heart center, all of your fingertips gently pressing into the opposite fingertips. And we're going to invite all the weight to one side, feeling that support into the base of your big toe, fifth toe, center of your heel. Lovely. Taking your breath in, gently exhaling as you transfer your weight, gently tightening your pelvic floor for a little more stability and support. Beautiful, and back down. Releasing your arms, inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, release. Bring hands back to heart center. We're going to lift the knee just a little bit higher so this is a very modified pose for the standing staff. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, release. We transfer to the opposite side. Knee coming as high as you're comfortable, maintaining your stability and balance. Lovely. And release. Great. Let's stand at the back of our mats. And we are going to emphasize hip hinging. So when we move throughout the day, we want to move in a way that is supporting our posture, supporting our alignment. So that means that our knees are soft, our buttocks is going back as we bend forward. Now let's do that with arms coming to the sky, inhale. Exhale, just practicing that forward fold, 
so that you're reinforcing a lovely movement pattern that you can use throughout the day and bring hands right to the fold so you know where the movement should be mostly coming from walking the hands down and as you do keep bending and inviting your hands to the mat until you come all the way down to table pose with fingers spread wide hands directly underneath your shoulders we're going to invite a gentle tilting of the pelvis so inhale pelvis is reaching to the sky so it's your tailbone is reaching up high your elbows are staying bent so that you engage your triceps exhale as you tuck all the way under your thoracic spine or the spine part of your spine between your shoulder blades is staying in a nice neutral position inhale tailbone up and exhale tailbone down good once more inhale tailbone to the sky exhale tailbone tucked all the way under and now find your middle ground and that's your neutral pelvic position lovely keeping that neutral pelvic position we're going to work on shoulder blades inhale as your shoulder blades come together exhale as you press into the mat letting shoulder blades go apart but notice how the elbows stay slightly bent inhale together exhale pressing lovely one more time inhale together and exhale pressing apart lovely let's take a little break from our knees and we're going to come all the way down keeping our core nice and strong as we lower down with hands directly underneath our chin and we're going to reach back inviting the heel towards your buttock to get a nice lengthening through the front of the thigh muscles that tend to get very tight when we do a lot of sitting and they lead to lots of knee problems when they get tight and get little trigger points so let's switch and do that stretch on the opposite side if you're noticing that you're particularly tight this might be something that you want to do more frequently and there's lots of variations of this stretch um, that you would find in exercise for better bones so i would invite you in case you aren't familiar with that to look so that you keep your knees strong and safe hands are placed directly under your shoulders keep your core engaged so pelvic floor gently tight breath in exhale pressing up to your table pose once more hands directly under the shoulders knees directly under the hips elbows remain soft we're going to be lifting one limb at a time and the objective is how stable you keep your body not how high you lift your arm or leg so nice relaxed breath exhale keeping your body very stable lifting your hand anywhere between an inch and all the way horizontal in line with your body once again it's how stable you keep it if you keep the supporting elbow soft you're going to work your triceps if you lock your elbow there's no work in the muscle at all you're just hanging on the ligaments let's return the hand down so challenge yourself keeping those elbows bent pointing towards your thigh breath in feel the transfer of the weight onto your supporting hand as you lift the opposite hand by leading with your thumb you're allowing a little bit more space in the shoulder protecting the rotator cuff and then lower right down beautiful legs are much heavier so we're going to start by just sliding them gently back breath in and exhale first transfer the weight through your hands through the supporting leg so there's very little motion and you're going to start just by sliding the leg back and if it's right for you to start lifting 
but know that you're transferring that weight, you're keeping your arms in a nice strong position. If you're able to lift to the horizon without tilting your pelvis or your shoulder girdle, terrific. And then coming all the way back with that same stability. We're gonna do this one more time on the last limb. Breath in and exhale. Once again, transfer with stillness, keeping shoulder girdles, pelvic girdles in the back of your head, very still. Imagining teacups sitting and as the, those teacups are at the back of your head on each shoulder girdle and on your hips. And so as you lower down and lift, everything stays so very quiet. Good job. All right, time to do a little core work. We're gonna lower down onto our forearms and our knees. If you find pressure on your knees difficult, you can use a bit of support under your shins. You can also press the tops of your feet down into the mat and that the weight goes through your feet rather than your kneecaps. So you're taking up some of that weight, keep your core engaged. Whenever you're in a plank, you want your shoulder blades to be in neutral. You want your pelvis to be in neutral. You also are looking to not feel any stress in your back. If you feel any stress in your back, it's your body's way of telling you, you just worked a little bit too hard. All right, you're gonna press all the way back up. Very nice. Coming back onto hands. Big toes together, knees apart. We're going to just release any tension. You might feel it in your back, walking out with your hands in front of you, allowing your forehead to sit down and relax onto your mat. Your sit bones are reaching up into the space behind, over your heels. And a nice little stretch through your toes if you want to tuck them under at the same time. Lovely. One last breath. <sighs> Very nice. All right, we're going to make use of this cushion that we have to strengthen our back. So let's grab the cushion, bring it into the space directly under the pelvis. So the bottom of your cushion is about at your pubic bone, and the top of your cushion is just beneath your breast. Your arms are going to start down by your side. You can rest your head on the side, or if you want to use a towel for your forehead. I found that the larger the breasts of the person doing this, the bigger the pillow you need. And also it makes the headrest much more comfortable. Because when you're large breasted, everything's dropping down and it's a lot harder to get good form. All right, feet stay engaged to the earth. Pelvis stays engaged to the cushion. Nice relaxed breath in and exhale as you press your pelvis down. You're lifting your torso gently, just enough so you're lifting off of the mat. You're gently squeezing your shoulder blades together. Thumbs turn towards the sky in a way that opens up your shoulders. And then you're going to release all the way back down. Nice relaxed breath. And let's repeat. When I mentioned to open up in a way that opens your shoulders and the opening of the thumbs, I, I see many of my yoga students doing this. They're very flexible through their shoulders, but you'll notice how that turns you all the way in. So make sure you're opening up to undo a lot of the closing that we do all day. And let's come all the way back down. Wiggle out any tension you might be feeling. And we're going to do that one more time. All right, breath in. Once again, feet press down, pelvis presses down as you lift up. Beautiful, bending your elbows and press them just beneath your shoulders. And we're going to keep pressing all the way up and back. Nice. 
All right, we'll move the cushion off to the side. We're going to roll onto our side, come down onto our forearm, and here we're going to do a side plank. So we're going to straighten the top leg, keep the bottom leg bent. You can adjust the intensity of the side plank by whether you, or not that bottom knee is in line with your body or forward. The more forward it is, the easier it is because you have a bigger base of support. All right, so elbow tucked directly under the shoulder. When you come up and with any effortful poses, you want to make sure your tongue is at the roof of your mouth. So let's take a breath in and exhale, pressing your forearm firmly down. You're pressing through the whole outside of your lower leg, a little bit through the top foot. You're lifting and working your transverse abdominis. Your head stays in line with your body. This arm is free to reach to the sky. Or if you feel that you want to support your shoulder joint, then that's always a great option to use your hand for. Right, lovely. So we are going to lower down. We're going to turn our entire body at a 45 degree angle. So we're going to turn just to explore what a 45 degree side plank is, lovely. And then we invite the opposite hand down through both knees and we're going to take it all the way to the other side. So allow yourself to come down to set up so that you can adjust your bottom knee, whether it's in line with your body or forward from your body. You want to ensure that your elbow is directly under your shoulder. You're going to take a nice relaxed breath and you're going to exhale as you press your forearm down, lifting the hip to the sky. You want to not sag on your shoulder, but make sure that you're really engaging those muscles. And once again, your top hand is free to either just reach to the sky or to come and support through here or simply resting on your hip, whatever feels best for you. Lovely. And we're going to rotate back through a 45 degree side plank just to start exploring what that feels like. Lovely. Rotate all the way back to your full plank. Very nice. Belly button to your spine. Lovely. And we can open up the forearms. All right, so coming right down to the ground, and we're going to just shift ourselves to the side of the mat, raise the arm away from the side that we shifted towards, roll all the way over onto your back, and then just finish the shift back to the center of your mat. Lovely. So we're going to release any tension we might feel in our back from doing the planks. You invite one knee to the chest, opposite knee to the chest. Shoulder blades stay tucked. Head stays long so that the crown of your head is reaching the wall behind you. Lovely. We're going to lower one foot, then the other. Going to slide the right leg all the way down and invite the left arm to reach to the wall behind you. You want to elongate your entire body through the diagonal. Beautiful. And let's slide that one up and hand comes back and we'll take that to the opposite side. Breath in and exhale as you elongate, keeping your core tight so you're not lifting just through the ribs but feeling a nice elongation all the way through and just continue to breathe in a nice relaxed manner. Beautiful. And release. If you have any discomfort when you lift the arms overhead, you can always lift them up on a, sh a shorter angle so that you're not getting as much compression. So with arms outstretched anywhere between shoulder height 
to overhead, wherever you feel a nice gentle stretch through your body, I want you to invite your legs to go down. And I want you to get a nice elongation. So arms are reaching in whichever direction your fingers are pointing, but you have no discomfort in the shoulder, just a gentle stretch across the front of your body. Your heels are reaching far down, but you're keeping your core engaged. Lovely. And then relax your arms all the way down by your side. Hmm. Very nice. Bending your knees. Raise one arm up. Roll on to your right side. And just take a minute. Take a few breaths here, laying on the right side so that the left nostril is doing most of the inhalation. Your left rib cage is lifting and lowering. It's a lovely way to balance a Hatha practice that's a little bit more aggressive, um, just to bring a little bit more yin back into your yang of your practice. And using your hand, press all the way up. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I hope that this little tutorial gives you a good sample of what uh, my longer yoga sequence is all about. Have a lovely day. If you enjoyed this sample yoga workout, um, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a lot more information on osteoporosis, on, on movements, on being safe. Um, for individuals who are concerned about their bone health or are just wanting to age well with exercise.